Hello, friends. Uh, just give a snippet overview on this GLIM assessment. Uh, so this can be asked as a question in DRNB. So it's a relatively newer concept that came in 2019, uh, increasingly being spoken about as a means to assess nutritional status. So this is part of a nutrition. So GLIM is an acronym which stands for Global Leadership Initiative for Malnutrition. Global Leadership Initiative in Malnutrition. So they basically have come out with a new criteria for assessing the malnutrition because as of now, the one which was largely agreed, of, of course, in ICU, we have Nutrix score. Then largely that has been accepted was a subjective global assessment, SGA, what we call. As the name sounds, it's subjective. So we needed to have objective variables. Then you we need to have means and ways to ascertain sarcopenia. So we used to look at gross muscle wasting, loss of weight as an objective tool. So this particular assessment tends to encapsulate those aspects also. Bit of a muscle wasting, bit of a weight loss, bit of a BMI, and bit of a nutritional intake, so on and so forth. So it sort of tries to encapsulate those elements which were not there in subjective global assessment. Of course, Nutrix score is something that is a little more advanced tool, more for ICA. So, that, so that's about the context as to why this assessment came into 4A increasingly being spoken about and undergoing certain validations to see if this can be used as a norm uh, at this point of time came about in 2019. So as I said, the name is Global Leadership Initiative on Malnutrition. It is a tool to assess the nutritional status of an individual to identify patients who are malnourished. So malnutrition. So it is a tool to establish the diagnosis of malnutrition, which is more of consensus driven, which is consensus driven diagnosis of malnutrition, which helps us to do epidemiological study for the global diagnosis of malnutrition and have some consistency in the way malnutrition is ascertained in population and it is reliable. So these are the key aspects. So it has to be reliable. It has to be consistent in picking up the malnutrition and should be globally be acceptable and for all sorts of population that we deal with. So, so it may be ICU, it may be non-ICU, it may be hospital, non-hospital. So this tool should be able to identify and screen the patients and assess the nutritional status. So this is this is what the GLIM is all about. So GLIM, so this was published in 2019 in a JPEN by Jensen et al. That is where the whole validation and acceptance of this claim came. It's a two-step process. The first step includes identifying the patients at risk for malnutrition. Once you screen and identify the patients at risk, the second tool is more about detailed assessment and confirm the presence of malnutrition. So this is a two-step process. So this is important for all the intensivists. The essence of GLIM is it has two broad categories, etiological criteria and phenotypic criteria. That's all it, it is in GLIM. So using this criteria, they're trying to validate if this can be used as an objective tool. So it, so it has two components, etiological tool and phenotypic tool. In etiological tool, so they look at whether the nutritional intake has been diminished for whatever reason, whether the nutritional intake is not happening to an extent the, that it has to happen or the etiological, it looks at the underlying disease. It could be cancer, it could be critically ill, it could be any other chronic disease or any chronic inflammation that is, so the etiological is whether there is a decreased nutritional intake and whether there is an underlying chronic inflammatory or acute inflammatory or disease burden. It can be intensive care patients with sepsis, it can be oncology patients, it can be post-operative patients, it can be any other immunological problem, so on and so forth. Phenotypic, in phenotypic, they see whether there is a weight loss. So if there is an objective assessment of weight loss that has happened and whether there is a low BMI that it is categorizing. And the third aspect, which possibly other tools may not have encompassed, is the muscle wasting, whether there is a sarcopenia, whether there is a ongoing muscle wasting that is it. So this is all it is 
which which forms the components of glims and they should have either one criteria from etiological and one from the phenotypic to call it as a malnutrition so it's very simple either they should be taking less feed they should have underlying disease they should be ongoing weight loss low bmi or sarcopenia one out of each you can call it as malnourishment if they fulfill criteria very simple tool in that sense so what are the purported purported advantages of glim so the glim assessment it is a international consortium which has largely agreed uh, that this is a validated tool so it came in the jpen so there was a international consortium which agreed this is a good tool and glim has a standard definition as you see and it could be used as a standard for all publication of data related to the malnutrition and glim has an ability it has an expanded ability to detect and document malnutrition so these are some of the purported advantages and glim also factors in the ongoing sarcopenia or muscle wasting which the previous tools not necessarily incorporated in the objective sense so it had a it had an inclusion of ongoing sarcopenia or muscle wasting or muscle loss that is happening and there is no scoring like how nutric score you have to score for each you just need one out of etiological one out of phenotypic to call it as malnourishment so there is no scoring and there are only two grades in this either moderate malnutrition or severe malnutrition you call it moderate you call it a stage 1 where it is moderate and stage 2 is severe malnutrition that's all it is so it's a very simplified sort of an approach with distinctive ad advantages from epidemiological standpoint that you could categorize someone as malnourished and do some sort of a publications definition is sort of a standardized and it has an expanded ability to detect and document malnutrition so on and so forth so now we need to see whether this particular definition has been validated with clinical studies that's what it is important for us to accept whether this is a validated tool so glim assessment has been assessed in elderly population and they have shown this was a study that was published in cancer journal so glim along with geriatric nutritional risk index which is called gnri predicted malnutrition and related outcomes in a good way in elderly population with digestive tumors so it had validation in elderly patients along with geriatric nutritional risk index and in hospitalized patients whether glim is validated in hospitalized patients glim along with multi nutritional assay short form that's another assay so along with this it had increased sensitivity and increased specificity so which means glim is validated in elderly glim is validated in hospitalized patients along with multi national uh, multi nutritional assay short form along with that it had a increased sensitivity and specificity what about oncology in oncology patients it had a good predictive validity to look for post operative complications and this subjective global assessment which was being used did not have this predictive validity in oncology patients to look at surgical complications and this was found to have a good predictive validity that came from this brazilian study in 2024 as you see all the studies are very recent so in oncology it had validity in elderly it had validity and in hospitalized patients they saw they showed that it performed well in trying to identify and prognosticate malnutrition so and the studies from brazil has shown glim had a good correlation did not actually did not have good correlation with hospital mortality but it had a good correlation with icu mortality and it had a decent correlation with sarcopenia or ongoing muscle loss although this particular study did not show having good correlation with hospital mortality so that's all we have with regards to the whole glim so it's a newer tool uh, so what trainees have to remember is there's two broad categories etiological criteria and phenotypic criteria one out of each will qualify someone as malnutrition only two stages moderate or severe so the take home message is the definition is the glim helps in diagnosis of malnutrition which is consensus based which has a global acceptance with consistency and reliability and criteria effectiveness is at this point of time appears variable so further validation and refinement is necessary to improve its accuracy across various clinical scenarios right now as you know it is done in oncology hospitalized patients and elderly 
but we need its validation in various like it needs validation in ARDS, it needs validation in sepsis, it needs validation in pure ICU patients, so on and so forth at this point of time. So that's about it, folks. So it's just a snippet, just an overview of GLIM. It can be asked as an exam or as a short note. So be aware. So we would be looking into more studies that may come out to look at that, look at its validity. So thank you all. So request you all to submit your valuable work to Journal of Acute Care. Visit my website too. We have to this lecture. Thank you. Thank you.